What's up guys? It's me, Sir Ernest, and today we're going to solve problem 2.15 of Griffith's 4th edition. The problem reads, A thick spherical shell carries charge density rho, which is equal to k over r squared, where r is between a and b. Find the electric field in the three regions for r less than a, where r is between a and b, and r is is greater than b. Then we're going to plot the magnitude of the electric field as a function of r for the case of b which is twice of a. Okay now here we're going to select three regions as mentioned here. So let's start with the first region r less than a. Now if we have a uh, we have a thick spherical shell. So if this is the outer layer of the spherical shell, and then this is the inner layer. This is the center of the sphere. This will be A. And this will be B. Okay? So the charge is within this region. So we notice that the charge is a function of distance. So this is not, this is uh, non-uniform. Okay, so here we have three regions. One is inside the hollow part, and then within the shell, and then outside the shell. So let's start with the first one, where R is less than a. So this, he, uh, here we're going to use Gauss law in order to uh, use or to take advantage of the spherical symmetry of the system in order to find the required electric field. Okay, so for R less than a, so here we're going to draw a Gaussian surface, a spherical Gaussian surface with radius R and where r is less than a so in this region so you will notice that uh, the for r less than a there is no enclosed charge by gauss law this means that there is no electric field okay very simple very simple you don't need to use uh, uh, coulomb's law to calculate the electric field as long as you know how to use Gauss law and take advantage of some uh, symmetries that can arise it, that can arise from. Okay, so that's it. That's the first answer for number one, R less than A. Now, how about the second one? The second part, R is greater than A, but less than B. Okay. Now, in order to do this, to do this, we need to use the uh, again take advantage of the spherical symmetry and use Gauss law. And here we're going to identify that our Gaussian surface is here. It's between uh, the shell that created the the a shell or a sphere a sphere with radius a and a sphere that has radius b. So in this case, this will be our R. Okay, Gauss law says that the closed integral of E dot dA is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon sub zero. Now, because of spherical symmetry, this closed integral will now become a simple multiplication given by E, which is the magnitude of the electric field times the total area of this Gaussian spherical shell, which is 4 pi r squared. Okay, and this is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon sub zero. Now the, now, the important thing that we need to look into is the Q enclosed for this region. So how do we calculate that? Okay, here we use volume integral of the density over this volume. 
when we're looking at the volume, the enclosed volume will be this volume. Okay, so we just solve this volume integral, and this is equal to k over r squared times the differential volume L or the differential volume or the volume element for spherical coordinate system. So that's what this is r squared, correct? Sine theta dr d theta d phi. Okay. And you already know how to solve this. And, the, and then uh, this will be equal to uh, 2k, 2 pi k times r minus a. Okay, so therefore, this, uh, uh, this will give us an electric field given by k over epsilon naught. Again, here we substitute this. Uh, expression for q enclosed here and then do the the the, the usual uh, algebra and we'll end up with k over epsilon sub zero times r minus a over r squared r hat so this is the electric field for this region okay very simple Now, how about the last part? That last part will uh, involve this Gaussian surface. Okay, where in the Gaussian surface we'll have R greater than B. So remember, this is B. So this is your Gaussian surface for number three. So this is R greater than B. Okay. So similar to this, Gauss law is our, our expression will be will end up with this expression. So here we have E equals uh, one over four pi epsilon naught times uh, Q enclosed over r squared okay the only difference between number two and number three is that what is our q in close now q in close we just we still need to use this volume integral and we will use this because we still have the same uh, shell but this time we're going to consider the whole shed. Okay, so let's do this. So this is k over r squared times r squared sine theta dr d theta d phi, and this is equal to two, and then this is equal to four pi k because remember that when we cancel r squared here okay so we'll end up with sine theta d theta and then d phi so when we integrate sine theta d theta d phi that will be equal to 4 pi so we have k dr so k is constant so we'll end up with 4 pi k times the integral of dr which is the same what, as what we did here but instead of having a in, uh, uh, instead of having uh, limits of integration between uh, A and R, in this case, we'll have limits of integration from A to B. And this is equal to 4 pi K B minus A. So therefore, the electric field vector will now be equal to, uh, and we substitute 4 pi K B minus A here. So 4 pi will cancel. So we'll end up with k over epsilon naught times b minus a over r squared r hat. So this is now the 
electric field. So again, this is the electric field for R minus uh, R less than A. So that's inside the hollow part of the spherical shell. Within the shell, this is the electric field. And this is the electric field outside the shell. Okay. So now let's try to plot the electric field. So if this is the electric field magnitude and this is R. Okay. So I hope you can see it here. This is the center. And let's say for R or for B equals to A. So if this is A, this is B. B is twice of A. Okay? So, within the, for, for, for points from 0 to A, that's 0. Now, you can see that at R equal to A, if R equal to A, at, using this expression, the electric field is also 0. So, that means at R equal to A, the electric field is 0. So, there is no discontinuity at this junction okay and then at b if r if r is equal to b you will see that uh, this and this uh, sorry this and this will be a constant that constant is equal to F, uh, e naught which is equal to uh, k over epsilon naught times b minus a over b squared, which is a constant. So, okay, so let's say that is somewhere here. It is somewhere here. So this is e naught. Okay, so if we're going to plot this, we will have a increasingly, but in a in a, a little bit parabolic because of the r squared at the bottom. But generally, if we're going to plot this, it would look something like this. Okay, so this is the this is a, so the, in other words, the electric field from a to b increases like this. However, we will notice that at the at points greater than b the electric field will again uh, decay by 1 over r squared so this will be the plot okay so this is the plot of the electric field magnitude or the magnitude of the electric field as a function of r for a case of for for the case of b equal to a okay so that's it. That's the solution to problem 2.15 and I hope you learned something today and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.